quantum computing, though powerful as it may be, has remained out of the mainstream due to numerous complications in operating it in real-world applications. Nonetheless, researchers from around the world are continuously working towards addressing different aspects related to this technology to speed up its mainstream acceptance. In this regard, researchers from the University of Virginia School of Engineering and Applied Science have published a study in Nature Communications that marks a huge step towards real-world quantum computing applications. They have created a scalable quantum computing platform using a penny-sized photonic chip which decreases the number of devices required to achieve quantum speed. Photonic chips are similar to electronic chips in their application, but the difference is that these devices process information signals based on optical waves. Its application can be seen in the optical fibers that brings us the internet, where parallel lasers of different wavelengths are used to transfer data called multiplexing. These researchers adapted this concept to quantum computing. By entangling fields of light, they created a quantum source in an optical micro-resonator. Micro-resonators are micrometer-sized and ring-shaped structures that envelop photons and convert them into different wavelengths, called a microcone. The light then circulates around this ring and builds up optical power, which then leads to entanglement between the different light fields in a microcone. Through their experiment, the researchers were able to generate 40 quantum modes, full spectrum of variables from 0 to 1, from just one microresonator on a chip, proving the application of multiplexing in quantum computing. Why this is a breakthrough is that in 2014, Professor Fister and his team at UVA were able to generate around 3000 quantum modes in a bulk optical system. But its footprint was huge as it required thousands of optics, mirrors, lenses and other components to operate. Thus, this new research reduces the footprint on a large scale. The research opens numerous avenues for real-world quantum computing applications. For example, through this method, not only the footprint of devices will decrease by two or three magnitudes, but due to photons' properties, these also operate at room temperatures, hence reducing the need for cooling that is required for electronic circuits. In addition, as the experiment involved fabricating a micro-resonator on a silicon chip using standard lithography technique, that means it can be mass-produced. The lead researcher Yi states that we are proud to push the frontiers of engineering in quantum computing and they are working towards its optimization to increase the number from 40 to 1000 from a single device. One of the biggest challenges in the contemporary world has been to develop new and innovative ways to not only generate renewable energy but also store it efficiently. The IPCC's sixth assessment report, published in early August, has already warned about the unprecedented changes in the global climate and how humanity must increase its efforts for sustainability. Previously, we covered the story of Heliogen, which was innovatively using solar energy and storing it in rocks in an insulated chamber to transport the energy. Another startup by the name of Energy Vault has also been striving towards developing innovative ways to store renewable energy and has recently acquired $100 million in Series C funding. Energy Vault is the creator of gravity and kinetic energy-based, long-duration energy storage solutions that are transforming the world's approach to delivering reliable and sustainable electricity. Their technology works on the same principles of physics and kinetic energy as pumped hydro that relies on gravity and the movement of water to generate power, but instead of water, they use custom-made composite blocks. 
these 35 ton composite bricks are lifted by cranes to create a tower and the energy is then stored in the elevation gain. Then the bricks are returned to the ground and the kinetic energy generated from the falling brick is turned back into electricity. To place the bricks at exactly the right location, they use specially engineered control software. The plant's capability ranges from 20, 35 and 80 megawatt per hour storage capacity and 4 to 8 megawatt of continuous power discharge for 8 to 16 hours which is ideally suited to long duration storage with very fast response times. In addition, it is the only solution that does not depend on any specific land topography or underground geology and delivers around the clock base load power for less than the cost of fossil fuels. Compared to incumbent stationary energy storage solutions, most notably chemical batteries provides a sustainable alternative that does not degrade over the life of the project. As said by Zia Haq, general partner at Prime Movers Lab, Energy Vault has cracked the code with a transformative solution and is a game changer in our green energy transition. An international team of scientists, including researchers at the University of Limerick, has discovered a new molecule that could further increase ultra-fast decision-making in computers. This simple molecule is just made of 77 atoms and provides a new fundamental electronic circuit element in which complex logic is encoded in nanoscale material properties. This new type of computer architecture was inspired by the brain and was created by optimizing the electrical properties of soft crystals grown from the molecules. How it works is that the molecule uses natural asymmetry in its metal organic bonds to cleanly switch between different states which allows it to perform ultra fast decision making. In addition, one of the scientists states that in the new device everything is done in one place so there is no need to keep reading or moving information around. which diminishes the von Neumann bottleneck, a significant problem in technology development and saves enormous time and energy costs. This technology will have massive application as not only it can reduce the size of devices without compromising on speed but will also boost the fields of IoT, AI, financial decision making and bioinformatics. This is not the only recent system inspired by the brain. A team of researchers from the universities of Brown, Baylor and California has developed a new concept for a future brain computer interfaces system. BCIs are emerging assistive devices that depend on implantable sensors that record electrical signals in the brain and use those signals to drive external devices like computers or robotic prosthetics. This new system employs a coordinated network of independent wireless microscale neural sensors called neurograins, each about the size of a grain of a salt, to record and stimulate brain activity. The neurograins independently record the electrical pulses made by firing neurons and send the signals wirelessly to a central hub which coordinates and processes the signals. To develop this system, the team had to go through two challenges. The first was to shrink the complex electronics involved in detecting, amplifying and transmitting neural signals into the tiny silicon neurograin chips. The second was developing the body external communications hub that receives signals from those tiny chips. The device is a thin patch that attaches to the scalp outside the skull and works like a miniature cellular phone tower. The researchers state that such systems would one day enable the recording of brain signals in unprecedented detail leading to new insights into how the brain works and new therapies for people with brain or spinal injuries. Speaking of how the brain works, recent scientists from the universities of Johns Hopkins and Pennsylvania have mapped the part of the brain that links similar objects, leading to new insights about how the brain processes information out of context. For this, the scientists used a database of thousands of scenic photos with every object labeled. 
To quantify how often certain objects appeared with others, they created a statistical model and algorithm that demonstrated the likelihood of seeing a pen if you saw a keyboard or seeing a boat if you saw a dishwasher. Next, they monitored the subject's brain activities with fMRI and looked for evidence of a region whose responses tracked this co-occurrence information. The spot they identified was a region in the visual cortex, commonly associated with the processing of spatial scenes. But the study shows that it is also coding information about what things go together in the world. For example, when you look at a plane, this region signals sky and clouds and all the other things. That's it for this week. Do let us know your thoughts on the impactful technologies we discussed in this episode.